malfunctions with the cooling, cooling system there. Uh, can you tell us what this all means? Well, we don't know yet what it all means, actually. We do know that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has said that we're shipping in, the United States is shipping in coolant water. She may have misspoken. We think she's sending in batteries and, uh, and, and backup generators because the, if, if a nuclear plant like Fukushima loses power, it's not going to be able to get cool enough to avoid a major disaster. This is a very serious situation. Don't believe this is a chicken little thing. The sky is not falling. I mean, we should we should really be sensible about this. So society should really be supporting um, policymakers to uh, look carefully at this, to develop good predictive capabilities, and prepare ourselves for not only the average but the most extreme conditions. So a monster tsunami from the sun emerges, which could literally cause trillions of dollars in property damage. 2012, that's a presidential election year. We need to keep that in mind. Uh, it could paralyze the economy of the planet Earth. But not from a physical perspective. Physical perspective, yeah. 1859, we had a gigantic solar storm which knocked out telegraph wires back then, 150 years ago. Yeah. If that had happened today, it would knock out almost all our satellites, knock out power stations. There would be food riots around the country because refrigeration would stop. Airplanes would probably crash with, without radar. It would paralyze the, the planet Earth. Two trillion dollars in property damage. And again, this is a once in a century, once in two centuries storm. The last one was 1859. But we do have them, and we have to worry about them. That's a pretty high probability, once in two okay. centuries. Do we get a warning? I mean, is it like, hey, this is an act of God? <laughs> oh, by the way, Michio, you might want to sign a waiver before you leave, because Mark has you on his list already. <laughs> you have now put corporate America on notice. They are responsible for taking preparations. Go ahead, sir. Let's... But a giant one, like I said, could wipe out power stations on the Earth, wipe out communications, the Internet, radar. Uh, airplane travel, it would be a mess. We'd be thrown back a hundred years. Earth's magnetic field, which acts as our protective shield in space, has a hole in it. And that could put a lot of our earthly functions at risk. Dr. Michio Kaku, professor and author of the book Physics of the Impossible, is back with us. Professor, how are you? Good morning to you. Glad to be on the show. Uh, thanks. Twice in one week, man. It's bonus hour. Mm -hmm. What is this solar shield? This is the second time in four years that six or more Japanese reactors have been subjected to serious damage by an earthquake. We hope the Japanese learn from this. There are 55 reactors in Japan. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up because I was so confused by that myself when I heard that the U.S. was delivering coolant. It didn't seem to make sense that that would actually be of any help to the people there. Go into some depth, though, about the chain reactions that can happen here. Certainly it starts off and the systems fail and, you know, the, the cooling systems stop. But what are some concerns that can happen, you know, as the hours and the days go on? Well, if the, uh, if the cooling system fails... The uh, superheated radioactive fuel rods will um, uh, melt, and if they melt, you will have an you could conceivably have an explosion if there's too much water in the area and it turns into um, uh, steam. It could blow off the uh, the, the pressure vessel and, and could result in a huge release of radiation. Uh, I've written an article about this. We have maps showing radiation releases, but the reality is that it could be literally an apocalyptic event. be thrown back a hundred years. But are any steps being taken to, pre I mean, if God forbid this happens? In Congress, there is a bill to pass a paltry $100 million. It's stalled in Congress right now. It's an insurance policy. It, it would cost very little to begin the process of reinforcing our transformers, power stations. And remember, this does happen even periodically. In 2003 in South Africa, 14 power stations were wiped out because a solar flare hit South Africa. In Canada, uh, the city of Quebec was partially paralyzed.
paralyzed, uh, again, about 10, uh, 15 years ago because of a solar flare. These things happen. But the monster one is the one that we physicists are worried about. Okay. Uh Everybody, the sun is the source of all life, and it could mean the end of life as we know it. NASA did a study, and its findings are now out. We're not talking about global warming. A brand new government study on the very real destruct uh, destructive threat of solar storms. Check it out. The surface of the sun, a roiling mass of plasma and charged uh, high-energy particles. As we move to the launch pad, we can show exactly what we mean, escaping the surface of the sun and traveling through space to areas down here on Earth. Now, this giant fireball, if that ball hit the Earth and its magnetic shield, it would be devastating. I want to show you New York City at night. Times Square drove through here at 8 o'clock last night. Streets are empty. But the electric power grid would be wiped out by the current. Lights and computers, transportation, hospitals, all would go down. The study warns it would be a disaster, far worse than anything we have seen before. The menace of these sunstorms poses a bigger threat to more high-tech and advanced countries like the U.S. Everything from our sewage systems to our Wall Street banks operate with our power grid. And a game-changing solar storm that could hit at any time. So how worried should we be? Sounds like we should be. Michio Kaku is an astrophysicist and author of The Physics of the Impossible. Sir, good morning to you. Welcome back here. Glad to be on your show. Uh, now, what I'm reading here scares me to death. Should I be that way? That's right. We're talking about a potential Katrina from outer space. Uh, Katrina caused about $100 billion in property damage. And unless we begin to make efforts now to reinforce our satellites and power grid, we could have something maybe 10 times bigger than Katrina because we're talking about the loss of all electricity and all satellite activity. We'd be thrown a hundred years back into the past. Michio, has this happened before? In 1859, we had a humongous storm that wiped out telegraph poles, and we tried to then estimate what kind of power could do that. And we now realize that we are very young in the space age. If something like the 1859 storm hit again, it would literally paralyze all the United States, not just for a day or an hour, but for months to years. But in 2012, we do expect perhaps, perhaps another big one. Well, we have never before in our history, in human history for that matter, and that's part of what they found in the study because we rely so much on our ability to communicate through our computers that they would all go down, which would handicap not just New York, but really the eastern half of the United States, that's what the study finds, which would be far worse than the blackout of New York from four years ago, Michio. Well, that's right. Those blackouts only last for a few hours to a day. But if you start to short-circuit all the transformers and blow out the satellites and fry the communication grid, then you're talking about knocking out uh, the United States uh, for months before we can get enough rescue crews and repairmen to handle not just one city, but hundreds of cities around the United States. You know, Michio, sometimes you come on here and you sound like the doctor of doom and gloom. Does this, well, th I, does something like this keep you up at night? Um, it does, and I think with Katrina, you know, engineers knew that Katrina could happen, but they did nothing because they said that it's not going to happen while I'm around. Well, now we learned the lesson. You have to prepare for things, especially when you know that at some point, it's inevitable that we're going to have another big one, like we had back in 1859, except this time we're totally dependent on electricity. Michio, thank you. Hope to see you in person next time. We'll take you on okay. the phone if we can. Michio Kaku, thank you for your time today. 1859, I mean, we're going back 150 years on that, Megan. Now he's wondering about 2012. Watch for this story.